Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Mondesi from Optimal Care Pediatrics located in St. Lucie West. And with me is Dr. Drosner uh, with Nicholas Children's. He's a pediatric cardiologist and he's in the office this afternoon doing EKG screenings for our young athletes. And I'm gonna be asking him a few questions. Um, first question, what is a pediatric cardiologist? So a pediatric cardiologist is a type of physician who sees pediatric patients and evaluates them for suspected heart problems, either heart problems that you could be born with or heart problems that can be acquired, like you know high blood pressure or whatnot. And the type of doctor that manages and, and treats these patients who may be born with heart problems or have any form of acquired heart disorder. How is the training different from like myself, like a general pediatrician? So um, to become a general pediatrician, as you know, it's three years of pediatric residency. And then, then to become a pediatric cardiologist, you do an additional three years. Okay. And today we're doing screenings for our young athletes. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why we're doing the screenings? Sure. So at Nicholas Children's Hospital, we feel passionate that, um, you know, young asymptomatic athletes should undergo a screening EKG as a part of a pre-participation evaluation or sports evaluation. Um, so uh, we, um, we're in a variety of communities and uh, we will come out and essentially do free screening EKGs. And, and the idea is, is that you know, a lot of these scary newspaper headline readings that people see about catastrophic events that happen in the community, a lot of these kids really don't have any symptoms. And, and sometimes, you know, you know, there's not much to report on the pre-participation sports physical form, and sometimes our physical evaluations can be normal. So it's a, just another layer of data to evaluate these kids to get an idea if there's any underlying heart disease. Okay, excellent. So how can you pick this up? Um, if we don't have a lot of symptoms, how are we going to pick it up? Right. So, you know, when we think about um, the conditions that predispose our young athletes for catastrophic events in, in the community, a lot of times these are what we call cardiomyopathies, which is a medical term um, that represents essentially sort of, that essentially means that the heart muscle is not feeling well. And there's a variety of cardiomyopathies, but a lot of times, um, the EKG will give you a clue that the heart muscle is not feeling well. Okay. Okay. So that's why we're doing all the EKGs. Right. And then there, a, a, another minority of, of the population out there can have disorders in terms of the electrical system of the heart. And again, that's another thing that we can evaluate with an EKG. Okay. So what is sudden cardiac arrest? Um, yeah, when so, we hear of a young athlete passing away on the field, we often hear that term being thrown yeah. out. Well, sudden cardiac arrest is not a heart attack, and I think that's really important to differentiate. Sudden cardiac arrest is a medical term that basically means the heart is no longer pumping blood out to the body. And in our circumstances, it's most likely related to an arrhythmia, a very dangerous type of arrhythmia that ceases pumping function of the heart. And there's usually some underlying disorder, either a cardiomyopathy or an electrical disorder that predisposes to one of these dangerous types of arrhythmias. So if there is a cardiomyopathy, how is it treated? There's a variety of ways we treat cardiomyopathies depending on the type of cardiomyopathy. We're coming in the football season, so I'll use a football analogy. So for a variety of cardiomyopathies, we'll play offense, we'll play defense. Offense may include medicines or more sophisticated types of medical technology. Defense may include, you know, restriction from certain types of exposures or certain types of physical activities. Okay, excellent. And then if a child is diagnosed with an arrhythmia or cardiomyopathy, can they return to sport? You always hate it when a doctor says it depends, right? Yeah. I can tell you this is that as a pediatric cardiologist, we really value um, the importance of athletics in, a, in, a, in the pediatric life. I think it's important emotionally and certainly uh, important physically. I think participation in play provides a lot of confidence for children and increases their socialization. Um, we do everything we can to um, perform a variety of risk stratifications and work with families to get their kids back out playing. Okay. okay. 
So that's a, a big fear of a lot of patients. It, is it is a big fear. Of, you know, it goes both ways. Some families want, want their kids back out ASAP, and some families don't want their kids out at all. Mm -hmm. We really try to be reasonable and, and figure out at some sort of, you know, you know, some sort of medium uh, middle ground, but we really like for our kids to get back out. But there are certain, there are certain, there can be certain restrictions. Okay, thanks. Can you describe the symptoms a child with an irregular heartbeat may have? So an irregular heartbeat um, is, is a sort of a nonspecific medical term, otherwise known as palpitations, potentially where a child may feel um, some abnormal heartbeats. It, the symptoms that we see in, in clinic can be a, a variety. Some children may describe an overwhelmingly fast heart rhythm. Some children may describe it sort of an irregular rhythm. Some will describe a, a stronger heartbeat than usual. I think the key with, with the question is, what is the context of it? Is it occurring when you go from a lying to standing position or is it occurring in the middle of your basketball sprinting skills? Mm -hmm. Additionally, are there any important associated symptoms like does it make you wanna vomit? Does it make you feel like you're gonna pass out? Does it um, occur along with chest pain? Okay, excellent. And what conditions can cause the heart rate to increase or vary? Um, like an increase in temperature, or if you're running, or things like that. So, so a variety of um, situations we see um, can normally increase heart rate. Those may include, as you say, temperature, exercise, dehydration. We see a lot of kids, especially this time of year when it's so hot outside, running a little bit low on their fluid and Sometimes the heart rate accelerates a little bit as a response to that, and that can be uncomfortable, particularly for a lot of our teenagers. Outside of that, there are some pathologic or sort of disease-causing states that can elevate the heart rate. The most common would be something called supraventricular tachycardia. Um, we use an acronym called SVT, or Sam Victor Tom, and it, it essentially represents an abnormal electrical fiber in the heart that can predispose to fairly excessively fast heartbeats. Generally, we don't think of this as being a life-threatening or you know, critical condition, mm -hmm. um, but it's important to get an EKG to, to characterize the nature of that a little bit more. Okay, and then how are these arrhythmias treated? It, it, it really depends on, on, on what type of arrhythmia it is. A lot of times there are a variety of irregular heartbeats, maybe premature atrial contractions or premature ventricular contractions, which, which we don't do any therapy for at all. Um, in the event, if there is excessively fast heartbeats like supraventricular tachycardia, depending on the frequency and how bothersome it is, we could do nothing, we can use medicines, or sometimes we refer for procedures like electrophysiology studies with ablation, which can potentially cure patients of these. I think the key though is if a patient is having an arrhythmia, let's make sure that this is not the white flag of the myocardium saying, I'm not feeling well. Myocardium meaning heart muscle. So if a patient is suspected to have an arrhythmia, really wanna make sure that that heart muscle is like a Ferrari engine and just pumping real strong, okay? Okay, excellent, thank you. Um, I get this question a lot. So if we test their cholesterol, do a lipid profile, and it comes back abnormal, um, the parents also want to know, well, should they restrict physical activity because can my child get a heart attack? Right. That's a great question. And, and I, I'm, I'm a big lipid guy because I have high cholesterol okay. myself. Okay. Um, here's the deal with high cholesterol. We, we see two patterns in the community. The first pattern is going to be... Um, basically a child with relatively no risk factors who has pretty exceedingly high cholesterol and is primarily a genetic disorder, okay? That's familial hypercholesterolemia, one out of every 250 people, so fairly common. The other cohort of patients we may see with high cholesterol are maybe children with a variety of other medical disorders um, like diabetes or autoimmune disorders that also bring up their cholesterol, or they may have other risk factors like being overweight and a lot of environmental exposure to foods high in fat or processed foods that may give them high cholesterol. The bottom line is all these kids should exercise okay. because exercise can improve your lipid pattern. Okay, When we talk about managing cholesterol in the pediatric population, it's kind of like 
their prepaid college tuition fund. It's their investment in their future, right? So we educate and counsel on lifestyle modification in a select few patients. We will use medicines to lower cholesterol, but it's not to prevent a heart attack or stroke now. It's to prevent a heart attack or stroke in their 30s or 40s when they have you know, a family, a job, and all these different types of things because addressing those issues now is a great investment in their future. I like that analogy. Very good. All right. Any closing remarks for us? Um, well, thank you for having us today. Thank you. Um, we're, we're always around. Um, we're very passionate about getting outside of our office and working with community pediatricians to address um, any pediatric cardiology needs there may be out there. We're big advocates for screening EKGs in our asymptomatic um, athletes. We're advocates for, for universal lipid screening as well. Um, and we're big advocates for uh, a healthy cardiac lifestyle, which includes um, you know, eliminating as much calories from liquids, yeah. eliminating the processed diets and increasing fiber and exposure to more fruits and vegetables and, and, and the complex carbohydrates out there. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing this. It was great being here. Thank, thank you. you for uh, talking with me. Yeah. Enjoyed it. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care and have a good afternoon.